Zelda fans are no stranger to dissecting short, vague trailers. So when we got this new trailer for Age of Calamity and we saw this new mysterious hooded figure, naturally, the Zelda community erupted into mass speculation. It feels like last June all over again. Many of us were quick to assume that this cloaked figure could in fact be the fabled fortune teller. The fortune teller has long been theorized to be an almost double agent, foretelling the coming of Calamity Ganon so that the royal family would excavate the divine beasts and guardians for Ganon's corrupting. Not much is actually known about the fortune teller, so a lot of it is left up to speculation and theory. But at the time being, it is the best guess as to who this Maleficent person is. So today, we take a deeper look into three possible identities that the fortune teller could be. So make sure that you subscribe for further Zelda content and like the video as it really helps the channel. One of the first people I suspected could be the fortune teller was in fact the Queen of Hyrule. Creating a champion first put forth this idea when it speculated this very notion. Page 374 proposes the idea that because of the history of premonitions and the connection to the sacred power that women in the royal family have, that it's likely Zelda's mother could be the fortune teller. Additionally, we know that the fortune teller was in close proximity with the royal family and that King Rome wouldn't simply trust the words of a commoner. If we take a look at the stranger in the trailer, we can see that they are garbed in a Gerudo cloak, have corrupted Sheikah tech, and have long hair and makeup. The Gerudo cloak is an interesting detail. We can tell from the skin and hair color that this isn't a Gerudo. If this cloak wasn't handmade, it wouldn't be easily accessible to obtain for just anyone, as only women are allowed in Gerudo town. But it could have been gifted to the fortune teller by one of the Hylian Queen's closest friends, the Gerudo champion, Urbosa. The use of the corrupted ancient core can also be explained by the close relationship the Sheikah have with the royal family. Perhaps a queen, like her daughter, was obsessed with the Guardian technology and began experimenting with the effect Malice has on it. But what motives would the queen have to destroy her own kingdom and kill her own family? I think it could be tied to abuse. Across the story of Breath of the Wild, we see King Rome constantly berating his own daughter for not fulfilling her destiny, that she wasn't trying hard enough. Perhaps these hostilities weren't exclusive to the princess, and her mother was subjected to it as well. After years of abuse, she finally had enough and was ready to destroy the very thing Rome was tasked with protecting, the Kingdom of Hyrule. In King Rome's diary, we learn that the queen suddenly and unexpectedly passed away, it's possible that she may have faked her death to escape the royal family and finish her goal of perpetuating the Great Calamity. I'd also like to raise another point in that there's been a long history of the women in the royal family being possessed by Ganon and used as a puppet for his own sick and demented purposes. The Queen of Hyrule may have been afflicted by Ganon's power and did his bidding against her own will. Have you noticed that there's been a huge focus on Impa and Pura in these trailers recently? I don't think that's coincidental. If we take a look at the villain again, we can see that they have similar features to that of the Sheikah. Predominantly, the white hair stands out. But if we also take a look at the eye shadow, we can see that it is a similar color to Pura's. Furthermore, the fact that she's utilizing Sheikah technology backs up the possibility of her being a Sheikah and could also be the reason why Pura is obsessed with Sheikah tech. Would stand to reason that Impa and Pura's mother would have been the leader of the Sheikah. Maybe she didn't like how King Rome and the royal family were using her ancestors' technology for their own use and she began to resent them. She then defected from the Sheikah clan and sought out the disgraced members hiding out in the Gerudo Highlands and formed the Yiga clan right before the Great Calamity. Probably the easiest theory to make is that the fortune teller could be Ganondorf's mother, Twin Rova. In fact, I tried to make a theory on that last year, but didn't have enough info to really make a concrete argument. But the symbolism of the Gerudo Crest and the Malice Eye Jewel really speak to the likelihood of this being Twin Rova. The corrupted ancient core would have been afflicted by Malice, and the mother of that Malice would likely have the capability to use it. It's important to point out again that this character doesn't have the traditional look of a Gerudo woman. 
but that doesn't mean that Nintendo and Koei Tecmo may have taken some creative liberties with the design choice. Twin Rova in previous Zelda games have been the Gerudo witches Koame and Kotake. It makes a lot of sense for these witches, or singular witch in Age of Calamity's case, to have magical and prophetical capabilities. Twin Rova could have planted the seeds of the Great Calamity into the ear of King Rome and began her grand scheme to unleash Ganon upon Hyrule. Virtually nothing is known about this new villain. What is clear though is that they are very much a minion of Ganon. The identity is something that only time will tell, but with Nintendo releasing a new trailer pretty much weekly, it doesn't seem like it'll be very long until we actually know who this is. The implications Age of Calamity have are astronomical. This game very well could lay further groundwork for Breath of the Wild 2. It's extremely exciting to see the original story fleshed out and expanded upon. Adding all these new layers to a story we thought we knew makes this more than just a retelling of Breath of the Wild's narrative. Age of Calamity is going to be a huge factor for what we can expect out of Breath of the Wild 2. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for this video, speculation theory type thing. I think it's very interesting uh, to see all the different possibilities for who this character is, just off of the very, very minuscule details that we have been given. It's, uh, it's really exciting to see, and uh, you know, we're almost a month away from the launch of Age of Calamity, so uh, we won't have to wait too much longer, thankfully. But yeah, uh, let me know who you guys think it's going to be, and uh, until next time, I'll see you in the next one.